Sometimes a hillside garden provides a challenge, but on this sort of open woodland hillside garden, just a little bit south of the main part of Nashville, uh, George Ann and Johnny O'Connor have done a spectacular job of creating a beautiful garden. How long ago did this start? Oh, maybe 18 years. About I, 18 years yeah, ago. This I is... got a John Deere riding mower uh -huh. for an engagement okay. present. All right. And you decided that even with a riding mower, well, the hillside... Well, it had a trailer. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And you started hauling things. Yes, I did. I see. I did. So tell me about sort of the development of the garden and, and how it all came about. Well, it, as you see, I've, I've lived in this house about 42 years. Uh -huh. And it's covered with walnut and hackberry. Right. A few poplars. And there wasn't much here. So like all beginning gardeners, I think it was ring around the tree sure. to start with. Okay. And uh, then from that, we added on a pathway right. and an island and, and another garden. And sure. all of it had to be amended because the soil's very bad. Okay. And you also had this hillside yes, to deal with. Yes, it did. It, there's not, it's not level at all. So even working right. it, you're, you're on an angle to uh -huh. work the garden. How did you determine, or how did you go about really dealing with this slope and everything that, that you have here? Well, we went to the top part to right. make the level okay. and then built the lower part to meet it. To meet it. In stages. And so you built just... it out of, uh, I see some wood rails here mm -hmm. along the sides, mm -hmm. almost railroad tie kind of. Landscaping. La landscape mm -hmm. ties. But a lot of stone. A lot of stone. How much stone? 40 tons. 40 tons 40 of ton. stone. <laughs> and then I quit counting. Right. Uh -huh. And I, I understand that Johnny. Uh, Johnny, yes. Moved all that stone. He did. He and, did. And uh, built all of these beautiful stone walls that we see. So, then your plant palette probably was dictated by it the was. site. It was, and I did have help from Sally Reynolds. Uh -huh. She uh, came over and Johnny had plotted out the lot with the beds that we had then. Right. And she took a look around and went away, came back with names of plants that might possibly go there. Right. Not where they went, but which bed. Uh -huh. And that was a tremendous help. Right, so you got a plant list yeah. from, yeah, from plant a professional list. Yes. Uh -huh. that gave you some good recommendations yes. starting, and we know Sally yes. well here. Uh -huh. uh, so that always is a, a helpful starting point, I think, especially for mm -hmm. somebody who's just kind of in the beginning phases of gardening, is you know what plants will do well on my site, and, and those kinds of questions to be answered. Um, you've got lots of hydrangea. Yes, I bought these as Annabelle, but you know they're not. They're right. the smoothly. They're the, the little lace cap. Uh -huh. they, um, are, they are just the native uh -huh. one. And, uh, but Annabelle was a daughter of right. these. Right. And uh, so they've done very well. I should probably have cut them down uh, pretty low in the winter mm -hmm. because you can see they're getting pretty tall now, but you can cut those all the way down to maybe a foot uh -huh. and then they and come, come back. back. Uh huh. So about every third year, I'll, I'll do that to them to keep them from being so... Um, Quite so big mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. kind of overtaking the yes, hostas and other things that are in the bed. Well, so much more to see, so let's keep okay, on walking down right. the path here. So, Georgianne, one of the things I notice you have a lot of are climbing hydrangea. You have mm -hmm. several in different places. Tell me about those. Well, I, I like the look of them. Uh -huh. and. Uh, we do have a lot of tree and a lot of space, so I wanted to have some horizontal uh, to stop the sight from going all the way to the sky. Uh -huh. And I got onto this, the first one there is the oldest, uh -huh. and then realized there are more varieties. Once you get into a, a group, you sort of like have to have them. Exactly. And uh, so the second one is Rosum, and it has a little bit of a pink tinge sure. to it. And then the third one is is uh, Molly, and it has a fuzzy kind of leaf. Uh -huh. I used uh, Wilkerson Mills. Uh -huh. I, a lot of them came, maybe all of these climbers came from there, but he says, don't let them climb to the moon. Okay. Meaning let them go over something. Right. To get horizontal, much like a common rose. Uh -huh. So you'll get the hormone distributed. So that distributed. they keep going up and up and up, they, they don't bloom mm -hmm, as much as if mm -hmm. they're on something yes. like an arbor yes. like you have. Yes, they like the arbor. That lets them go over the top. They do. Okay. And if I clip the tips because they're getting a little bit out in the way, that seems to have more bloom on it okay. the next year. Very good. Mm -hmm. I've noticed a number of lace cap hydrangeas here in the garden, and this one I think is the most impressive. What variety 
is this? It is is the bluebilla. Bluebilla. Uh -huh. So this is Hydrangea serrata, which is a different yes. species from the big, what everybody calls Microfilla. the French uh -huh. hydrangea, the macrophylla. My experience is that they bloom better after our cold winters, and certainly we've had a couple of really oh, cold winters, and these are looking mighty fine. They, they seem to be everlasting. Right. Uh, they, no matter what happens, they have a bloom on them, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit smaller. Do you have to do any trimming on them? Uh, I do. I don't trim them off unless there's a one coming out. Right. Or unless you've got ugly. like a dead yes. tip or but something all of after these, the winter. Uh, when they bloom, you just cut off the dead, uh -huh. of the dead blooms, right. just to make it neater. Right, right. One of the other things that I've seen that you've done here in this garden is you've got some vines growing up through some of the shrubs, which mm -hmm. gives you another layer. A really nice clematis in particular, growing up through, is that a camellia? That's a camellia, uh -huh. it's a fall blooming. I think it's kind of interesting. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. Jack Manny I No, I? it's when I got at the Jackson uh, Fest, Summer Festival. Okay. And it was like all summer long, something of summer that. Summer Love? Summer Love. Summer Love. Summer Love, that's right. So that's right. one of those new ones. It's a new one, yeah. but it looks like, like the one we're used to being exactly. dependable. Beautiful. Well, I love that so much of your garden is so textural. And a lot of that has to do with the hostas that you have. And, and you and I know each other actually from the Hosta Society. I yes, think that's probably yes. where we met and I know you're really involved. So um, tell us a little bit about how you got started in Hostas and, and maybe point out a favorite or two. Well, I belong to the Middle Tennessee Hosta Society uh -huh. and there's a great group of friends. I love the Hosta, but I didn't want just all Hosta. Mm -hmm. I wanted to mix it around. And I think they're very blendable with a lot of plants. I think they are too. And you've got a lot of fern, you've got mm -hmm. Solomon seal, spring wildflowers, mm -hmm. uh, and they all work so well together. A any varieties that you're particularly proud of? Well, there are some tried and true, uh -huh. and they will be listed like on the popularity poll every year. Right. So if you're new to Hosta, mm -hmm. that's a good source to use to know what people have experience success with. Right, and the popularity poll comes from the American Hosta Society? It comes from the members, from the members. that are actually growing Hosta okay. to vote on what their favorites are. Okay. So if for 10 years Segay has been on the list, you know that must be pretty good over uh, a pretty wide good, area. Over a wide range of, uh -huh. of climates yes. and things. But as an adventuresome person, mm -hmm. you see one, you nobody's ever grown it, and you just got to buy it whether it grows or not. I so. understand, and that's how all of us gardeners <laughs> yes, are, I think. Yes, yes, but but I think my favorite is Victory, uh -huh. and it's a pretty pretty big one. And it's a really big this one. This one over here is Very uh, impressive. pretty big, and I don't want to talk about it too much because next year it could be little. Right. You never know. That's how it is. <laughs> yes. But uh, as hostas go in the south, a lot of times we don't see a lot of really big mm -hmm, hostas like mm -hmm. we do up north. So mm -hmm. victory certainly is victory, impressive. It is. And Segay is always a, a winner. Uh, June is uh, always favorite of everybody's. Nice yes, it is. Very good. And uh, then some substance behind that, that bright yellow uh -huh. is one that people enjoy and have success with. Right. So this okay. part of the garden is the downhill side of the garden, and it's a little bit newer. Mm -hmm. And But you're still featuring a lot of shade plants. You're, we're still under big trees, mm -hmm. and we're kind of here on a drippy, rainy day a little bit. But it's, yes. I love a shade garden in the rain because everything nice. sort of gets bright, and the greens are so green. Mm -hmm. um, but you've got a lot of uh, native azaleas down in here, yes, I notice. I like those, uh -huh. and they like this shade. Right, and they like this hillside. Mm -hmm. They like that good drainage, drainage mm -hmm. and all of that. Mm -hmm. And I love the sound of this stream. How long has the stream been here? About six years now. Uh huh. So and it's beginning to get a little bit filled in over the sides. Right, you've planted around uh -huh. the edges of it. And how long is this? It is 50 feet, I believe. Uh -huh. It has a horsepower motor to go that length and height. Okay, and so. then it comes down into mm -hmm. sort a of a, a hidden basin mm -hmm. underneath here, mm -hmm. right? They call it uh -huh. a poolless waterfall. Right. Pool is what? Right. So the motor is in a vault. Uh -huh. That's it takes 68 gallons to prime the system outside the vault. Okay. So. Uh, and then it from there it just up. recirculates mm -hmm. up to the top of the mm -hmm. hill and it all runs mm -hmm. back down and disappears mm -hmm. 
underground. So you don't have an open body of no, water. No danger. And you don't have any danger. You mm -hmm. don't have mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. You don't have all of that. It so is. nothing to worry about. But you want to make sure that the hose that you use going from the source is thick because chipmunks bit through the first. Oh, there you go. They had little teeth marks. We saw the evidence. I've had that problem <laughs> with soaker hoses in oh, my garden okay. where uh -huh. I'm trying to water uh -huh. and they go for that water source and chew through the soaker they hoses. Do. So that's a great they, tip they for everybody. They love that hose. Well, another new hydrangea it looks like here yes, in, in uh -huh. this part of the garden. Uh, what variety? Its name is Tough Stuff. Tough Stuff. Tough Stuff. And? And it's supposed to be maybe three feet tall. Right, so mm -hmm. not real big. Mm -hmm. But my understanding, and I haven't grown this one yet, my understanding is though that this will continue to flower on, on its new growth um, and really give you a long season of bloom through the summer. I hope so. so I hope always so. experimenting, always <laughs> trying something new. That's how we work. And speaking of new, this whole bed that we're we're looking at here, I, I think people can tell, is, is newly New. planted. Mm -hmm. And what happened here? <clears throat> I had a, a strip of bamboo, uh -huh. clumper, right. clumping bamboo, and thinking it would shield it from the fence, uh -huh. kind of a dead spot there. Right. And uh, it began to look a, not as vigorous, uh -huh. and then it started growing like grass on the bottom. Uh -huh. And then I was told that was a bloom. Okay. And it was it was very mysterious. Right. I cut all that off, fertilized it, thinking uh -huh. it would go back to growing big canes. Right. But nothing happened. And over a period of five years, I found out that it was you, dying off. It was dying off. So this is an interesting phenomenon that has happened across the country because bamboo actually started being imported to the United States mm -hmm. in the early 1900s and it takes about 75 or 100 years for a stand of bamboo to flower but once it does then it dies mm -hmm. and what we've learned is that those clones that were brought here from China and Japan uh -huh. in the early 1900s are now beginning to flower and once they do they'll They're die gone. off so people are sort of frantically looking at ways to it, we, we never thought it would be a problem to make more bamboo and it's not certainly mm -hmm. there are plenty of stands out there but what you're looking at now is regrowing bamboo from seed uh -huh. that those uh, those old clones are setting so yes. it's an interesting well, thing it, when that happens but it's opened up an opportunity for you it here has. to expand the garden a little bit more so most of your garden is pretty natural but you've got one area here that has a little more formal feel. Any particular reason for that? Or was there a tree in the center that sort of dictated that at one point? Or how did this little area come about? Well, I just wanted to have some variety. Uh -huh. and this was my formal. This was it's your, as formal as, as I could be. Formal as it's going to get, right? <laughs> yes. I love the Japanese maple uh -huh. in the pot there in the center. And I think that's something that a lot of people don't think about or maybe don't even know is that Japanese maples actually in our climate mm -hmm. perform quite well in containers uh, and it makes a really beautiful centerpiece for these rings of hostas that then sort of radiate out. Now we've talked a, a, quite a bit about hydrangeas and you've got, this is the panicle hydrangea. It is, quick uh, fire. Paniculata quick fire. Quick fire. And these are tree form mm -hmm. which adds to that formality a little bit. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing your garden with us, you, you and Johnny. We really appreciate being able to see such a beautiful shade garden and on kind of a challenging lot. It's a little bit, but made easier by Johnny laying the stone. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for coming.